I praise and thank God for this beautiful opportunity that God has given us to come in His presence before His precious Word. For our morning meditation, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 31, verses 1 and 2. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What? My son. And what? The son of my womb. And what? The son of my vows. The first few verses of this chapter are prophetic revelations of the mother of King Lemuel. There are many explanations about the identity of King Lemuel. As it is not clearly mentioned in the scriptures who he was. Some relate him to King Solomon, but it is not clear. Some relate Lemuel to the king of the neighboring nation. And his mother is a daughter of Israel, probably a member of the family of David. But whosoever this person might be, the mother is a God-fearing person and she wants her son also to have the fear of God in his life so that his life may be a blessing to many. She remains unknown by her name, but the words that came from her mouth are considered as the words of prophecy. These are the instructions from the Spirit of the Lord to his children, which is of much importance even to this present generation. And most important of all, it is the message to the body of Christ, the bride. And we'll be meditating about it in the days to come. The words of prophecy are the words that comes from the Lord. And the instruction of this mother is stamped as the divine instruction by heaven itself. And those words are so pure and strong that King Lemuel remembers it. Even in the midst of his busy life that is filled with so many responsibilities. As parents, especially mothers, have a great responsibility to raise children in the fear of the Lord. The fathers are busy laboring hard for the bread of the family and many a times they do not get enough time with the children. But as mothers get enough time to spend with the children in their young age, it is the responsibility of the mothers to prayerfully instill the divine principles in them. And for that first, the mother herself needs to be strongly rooted in the faith. If she herself does not give enough attention to her spiritual life, then the children also will lack that important factor in their life. A mother labors the whole day to prepare good food for her children. She knows what is good for their health and so makes sure that they eat the things that the children might even hate. But we need to remember that more than the physical food, the children's spiritual life needs to be nourished with prayer so that they are healthy and strong, enough to face the temptations that is awaiting in their life's journey. At the tender age, mother has the great opportunity to mold a child's character and life based on the divine principles. We cannot predict the situations that are waiting for our children in, the, in their future. But if we inculcate those divine principles by nourishing their spiritual life, then it is easy for them to move on in the path that is pleasing to the Lord. And then the blessings of the Lord will be upon them. And their life also will be a blessing for others. Here the mother in the following verses is warning her child about sinful companions, strong drinks, that can lead him to sinful deeds and warns him of the temptations that may compel him to disobey the word of God. Look at the blessed spiritual vision of this mother. She is not advising him to be wise enough to gather wealth for his generations or about things that will give him a secured life. But she is more worried about his spiritual life as she wants him to lead a life that is pleasing to the Lord. She says, you are the son of my vows. Maybe she has received this child from God as Hannah received Samuel with prayer. So she wants him to abide in the path of the Lord as her prayers end up as waste. She reminds him, you are the son of my womb. She bore him with pain. But now she does not want to leave this world with the sorrow of a sinful soul. Look at the mother of Moses. 
She instilled the faith of true God in the heart of that small boy in that short time that God gave her to be by his side. And that strong foundation helped him to take the right decisions at the right time in the sinful atmosphere of that Egyptian palace. Dear mothers, let us not wash our hands by just blaming the society and others when our children's lives are destroyed. We have a great responsibility upon our young soldiers. Let us warn them, guide them in the right path. And above all, intercede for their soul in the presence of the Lord so that the Lord may help them to discern what is good and evil and keep them away from the temptations of the enemy. We cannot control and change our children's life. But when we leave this world, our conscience must never blame us for the irresponsible life we have spent here. And remember, it will affect our eternal life as we will never be able to enjoy the divine peace. And we will have to carry that shame with us forever. Let us set the divine principles in our children's life right from the childhood. Children are the blessings of the Lord as God has given those precious souls in our unworthy hands and let us take our responsibility more seriously. Dear mothers, ask wisdom from the Lord how to deal with your children and the Lord is faithful to guide you in all truth. We have seen how the Spirit of the Lord stamped the instructions of a mother as a prophecy and it is a warning for the whole world even to us to this day. Let us not be engaged in worldly things that will divert our attention from the heavy responsibilities that heaven has bestowed on us. Instead, prayerfully let us nourish our spiritual lives so that the Spirit of the Lord will remind us of our duties and also help us to do it in the right way that is pleasing to the Lord. And May the Lord help us for that. Let us pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this beautiful time. Thank you for the precious words of prophecy. Lord, we pray for all the mothers. Lord, the world celebrates Mother's Day. But thank you, Lord, for the big responsibility in this evil world. And Satan is trying his level best to destroy our generations. Father, we pray that you may strengthen our mothers so that they may be spiritually strong and may guide and guard the children from the evil tricks of the enemy so that each child brings glory to your name and is a blessing for the family, for the church and for the nation. Lord, we pray that you may strengthen them. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. May God bless each one of us. Our Lord is coming very soon. Maranatha.